Hey guys, King of Charm Manners here. Alright, so the Holiday Cup is coming to a close. It was one of the metas I actually liked, and I it was a very, very fun, very interesting, and a lot of fun, but there was also things I don't like. So overall, the Holiday Cup was a success, in my opinion. For some people, they tanked a lot. For some people, they did. For some people, they rose a lot. So a lot of people made Legend in this cup because it's a very... If you, get, if you pick up the meta pretty well... And just how it's you're able to actually come back from so little from like so many situations even if you're even if you lose switch even if you lose lead there's still ways to come back and that was really good about this cup now the rankings for this cup were very I would say this cup was actually like very friendly on the like stardust side a lot of you probably other than like Alolan Graveler a lot of you probably already had some mods prepared there was plenty of time to get things like Vigoroth, Obstagoon, Wigglytuff etc so the barrier to entry for this cup wasn't that high everything was in Great League 2 and like I said you the a lot of these Pokemon were actually like usable in like other cups for example like Kanto Cup, Halloween Cup and other cups so you could actually like use Pokemon yeah it was it was actually very very interesting so like I said, because there was a lot of usability, this was a very low cost, low cost, I'd say like meta. And overall, there were there were a lot of ways where you can still even like flip your team and still make like and still make a decent run or a good run, even if you were like tilted or something like that. Anyways, let's get started. I'm gonna start with what I think was good, what I think was bad, and then we're just gonna go into summary everything. But overall, Holiday Cup ran for a total of a week. It was, in my opinion, should have been longer just because it's, the holidays are like two weeks long. So why was it a week? I don't know. But it was a week long. It was very, it was very quick. I feels like really quick now. And like I mentioned, a lot of pe a lot of battlers actually made legend here. So it was a very, there's a, it, there's some good and there's some bad. And we'll go over it. All right. So the good thing about this cup is like I mentioned before, it was actually cheap. For example, Wigglytuff was from the Kanto Cup, also was Alolan Graveler, things like Venusaur was also were also usable, and things like Skarmory, which are really meta picks in Skarmory, as well as Alolan Marowak, very meta picks in the Open Great League, and as well as things like Stunfisk, which were very, which were popular as well, Stunfisk. There was a lot of play you had over here. You probably either had stuff built, or you could build it very quickly, or you had to build from a previous theme cup. That's what made Holiday Cup pretty dang good. Another good thing is that there was a lot of neutral here's and there's. You know what I mean? There was a there was a lot of safe switches. There were a lot of things that were very safe. So this meta was very neutral unless you use target strats. So as you see here, a lot of what was like, this is actually like the first time I've seen Viggy as a number one or just like in the lead. As you see, a lot of these picks here were very readily available. Altaria, Alola Marowak, Magazone, they were very readily available. However, they're also very neutral. So things didn't really like, you could play out of bad matches. For example, Vigoroth still had coverage with Alola Marowak because of Bulldoze. You could actually beat Altaria with shield advantage. You could take out Wigglytuff if you have, if you beat it down and you have energy or if you, if it's chipped away. You could still beat things like Skarmory with Vigoroth and Frostless if you're able to hit a Bulldoze or if there's chip damage. Everything had a way out. Some things did get walled, however, and if you manage energy well, if you got the boost with Obstagoon, there was actually a lot of exit scenarios you could. So this cup required you to have good energy and shield management. If you were good at both of those, then this cup, you must, you really, this cup is something you might have really enjoyed just because it would, it really does it took a lot of player skill to like and it look it took a lot of like basic player skill knowing your counts etc to be really good at this cup the other good thing about it is that there was a lot of there was a chance for a lot of variants for example you could run frostless and skarmory together and alone and graveler there was a lot of team combinations that you could make that would still effectively work so you could still switch things around and have a little bit of fun but 
there's like you could run multiple teams and that can carry you a long way i know many battlers that made the same thing i and i'm there's me where i've literally used the same team this entire meta and climbed like 400 points with it so it really depends on it really depends on you as far as like like i said what i like to meta it really like what i really liked about it and what i've heard from a lot of people that liked it is that it really does there's a lot of ways out like i said things are very safe very neutral unless you were trying to lock stuff down and like i mentioned if you had really good player skill and you energy manage energy and shields well it was a very very fun cup and it really allowed you to showcase your skills all right so not the bad things now the reason why i skipped to right over here as you see to wigglytuff is because the thing about this charm and grass were like grass like charmers and razor leafers shadow razor leafers were just too dang strong because of the lack of poison and steel with the outside of Magnezone, because you only had things like Skarmory or Magnezone or like Alola Marowak, you had to essentially have either a charm counter or an exit plan or a battle plan against Charmers and against Shadow Razor Leafers. The two shield Wiggly and the two shield Charmer strat in general, along with this thing right here. Yes, I will call it a thing. Yes, you have an impressive number in this ranking scale. However, I will not acknowledge your existence. You are one of the most annoying things in the entire world. Unfortunately, you didn't have an answer against Shadow Victory Bell. It did run you over. Which Shadow Victory Bell or other Shadow Ray Reliefers were so dominant in this meta that they literally could take out as uh, they could take out like four archetypes. You could take out the grass, you could take out the rocks, you could take out frostless, you could take out wigglytuff, Vigoroth, and obstacle. So you could take out charmers, etc., as long as you had shields. And because of like what I mentioned, they uh, there have been plenty of scenarios where I've seen others and myself get killed by shadow victory balls because there just wasn't a good answer against it. As far as like unless you really put against one of its hard counters like obama snow or altaria skarmory etc you unless you got it locked into the perfect matchup this thing ran rampant as if it wasn't oppressive enough in the open great league it was just super safe in this meta if it was banned i you can keep charmers charmers there's a thing this thing ban them they're not fun there's no intricate strategy between them and the only reason it's so annoying is because it has acid spray and its attack is so high so it is a literal brain dead strat and yeah it's i i will i, I will take charmers over over shadow razor leaf just because shadow razor leaf is just so oppressive and it's just really no way out of it it's like robotically generic it's been yes you can argue the same thing about charmers however at least with charmers you can like at least at least like against charmers like they're so popular you have contingency plans you run double charmer you have a you can still have a way out you run a charmer and a shadow razor leafer depending on your team you're probably gonna get shredded by either one so just how powerful this thing was and how much it synergized with charm or double or just like a yeah how much it synergized with a charm strat it was just really nuts and really disgusting <laughs> Another thing is what I, it's not a, it's not what I would say I don't like, but things like B. Burrell, Lit Leo, etc. would wall things like a little Marowak and Frostless. So there was the wall strat here. That's not necessarily bad. However, not really, you don't really, Lit Leo XL is very expensive and also finding a good B. Burrell was almost really bad. The availability for B. Burrell was low unless you've already had one. There's also Drift Limb that could wall Vigoroth. So there's plenty of like wall strats in here. Some people didn't like the wall strat because if it get locked in, if you get locked into popular meta, you die. However, uh, it's like the wall strats. Wall strats was another thing, and the funny thing is, all the wall strats you see almost certainly lose against charm or grass charm or grass hole users, depending on which one you're facing or which one lines up. So wall strats were here as well. So if you got locked into this, it sucked for the per receiving end because you would um, you definitely would nearly lose that matchup unless you have energy advantage. So you have to have energy or shield advantage. Otherwise, you got locked into a really negative matchup and they're probably going to come out with their shields and they're going to take you out. For example, how Drift Limb and Vigoroth happened. Vigoroth gets destroyed. So that's just the way it was. And I think like that's I guess that's the one thing people didn't they, they, a lot of people had a hard time figuring out the cup because of these wall strats because of the charmers etc this this wasn't very kind to those that couldn't handle that type of pressure or like that like super oppressive like spam and pressure that this meta really presented another thing that's like I mentioned like the other element that anyone didn't let a lot of people didn't like or what i saw or some people players didn't like is that how fast everything was because this is a very very fast meta 
but like I mentioned with the Shadow Razor early first, sometimes it was so fast only because you really didn't have a way out or you got walled by one of these things. So in summary, I... The Holiday Cup, I wish it was longer. This Holiday Cup, if you... this ho The Holiday Cup was fun, in my opinion. It, theme comps are always fun in Go Battle League. Of course, you're always going to have Charm and Shadow Victory, but overall, this cup was very... Like I said, if you were good at team building or you're comfortable under pressure or spam, etc., you did really, you should have done really well in this cup or it helped you rise up. Holiday Cup was also kind of mean because the thing is, it's that, like I said, there wasn't a lot of checks to the fighters, etc. There's a lot of things that can work, so the meta was always shifting, unless you mastered one specific claim and just accepted the fact that if you lost the lead you had to really finish your way out or if you got hard counter there was really no way out there was a lot of ways you can rps your team your opponent in this there are rps the meta just depending on what you ran or how you aligned everything up so you have to be really careful about what you well about like i said realignment and energy so this is probably the cup that made you do that the most compared to kanto or halloween halloween there's various anti-meta strats etc as well as pressure and different type of mods just like the holiday cup however there was a lot of archetypes you could use etc and the po the types were a lot more oppressive than holiday cup was in the kanto cup the there was a lot of things as well like there was a lot of things as well like a little marowak etc so the good thing is holiday cup is kind of accumulation of all the other theme cups if you played a lot of the other cups you probably had a good idea of how to play holiday cup or like how it was going to pan out or you're familiar with matchups already because of that holiday cup was pretty dang good in my opinion the bad thing is, is there was no specific bands to this day. And for some odd reason, despite having multiple cups later or multiple seasons, actually, there hasn't really been any change. It's the same theme cup. The problem with this is things like Wigglytuff or things like Shadow Victory Bell run rampant and there's no checks to them. If specific mons were also banned along with the limited types, this would this cup would be have been definitely a lot more fun than it was right now. Maybe one day we'll see those things, I don't know, down the future, maybe one day we'll get like a revamp of the system, things will be added or things might be taken away or added, whichever one. However, I think that's one of the big gripes a lot of people had in this cup was that Charmers slash Shadow Victory Ball was not banned or a lot of other theme cups, a lot of overpowered things weren't banned. Because if you banned, if say if you banned Vigoroth, Obstagoon, or if you banned Frostless, this cup would have been incredibly interesting. If you banned the Charmers and Shadow Victory Ball, then this cup would have been really interesting because you wouldn't see a lot of fast move damage. It would be a lot of str strategizing energy management and trying to line up who beats who, who beats who out in both player skill and in your line. And who's comfortable with their lines. But like I mentioned, Holiday Cup was good in my opinion. It's, for some it really, it really wasn't it really wasn't good. They couldn't find their gem and couldn't find their way around the meta. But we might see more of these down the road and like it says on Go Battle League, on the on the updates page on the news page there's going to be a slew of season of theme cups for the second half so if you thought this one was interesting and fun i until we get the information for the next ones this can we have no idea what's going to happen so expect to see more theme cups in the future per niantic for the second half see it's for the second half of season six of go battle league if you guys like this video please like subscribe again i hope you guys had a great day for a holiday cup all three seasons all three all three leagues will return on Monday, 1 p.m. PST on 1 the 4th. So be prepared for that and be prepared to go back into your usual comfort zone, whichever league you decide to run. Again, good luck on your Go Battle League sets and I will see you guys on the next video.